Well, uh, as we move down the list of exciting young talent that stood up in this round, Christian, we're going to go to Daniel Lazani for the Melbourne victory. They got a 2-1 win over Perth Glory. And now, I-, I tweeted this out about 20 minutes into this game, and I-, I thought this game was completely set up for Azani to excel, right? We saw Popovich return to something that we saw a lot earlier in the season with his fullbacks, Adama Traore, uh, bombing pretty hard up the left wing and Jason Guerrier on the right was then inverting into midfield and what it did it was isolating Arzani one-on-one with defenders very often and you know we've often seen this Melbourne victory team be very linear and what they wanted to do and that was not the case today which is a promising sign for victory fans. Arzani was given a lot of license and, and being able to get wide with Guerrier on the inside was just one option they used. You know, Daniel Lozani was given a lot of license to roam essentially wherever he wanted in this game. And he even spent a fair bit of time at left wing as well. And just being able to free him up opened up so many more opportunities. You know, you have the back heel, a little bit of improvisation for the first goal, the pinpoint assist for Bruno's second as well on the header. He had that little moment where he just, you know, slowed the ball down a couple of drop of the shoulders and just skips past two glory defenders it's, it's beautiful football to watch Christian and, you know, all the talk will be about consistency for him now. He's had a couple of these games so far this year where he's blown it out of the park, but then the next week he's fallen off. So it's going to come down to that fixture in the Melbourne Derby, which has been 2 nil all draws so far this year. And that's going to be the real test for him if he can back up this amazing performance. Yeah, I can't disagree with you there. I thought it was a similar performance to the one we saw against Western United in that comeback win. Um, with the only difference being that you know he maintained a high level for a full 90 minutes um, in this fixture against Perth, whereas as he came on at half time against Western and showed in that last 45, you know what a t- top talent he really is. And I think you know you mentioned it. That's always been a concern we've had on here on the pod about you know Ozani because he tends to drop off whenever he has an outstanding game and he can't you know string a few great performances together. He always seems to. Um, yeah, fall by the wayside in, in moments where you really needed to step up um, in multiple games. So, yeah, I thought he benefited through, you know, Mashash, um, his movement to allow space to free up um, in the final third for you know, Azani to drift into, which meant he wasn't just stuck out on the right-hand side. Um, you know, we saw on occasions he also drifted towards the left. Um, he played a bit more centrally, and I think that's how Popovich is going to have to get the best out of his talent because, you know, just given the opportunity to roam around, have that freedom where he can, you know, create that magic and allow for improvisation like he touched on with the, the opening goal for Fornaroli. And then, uh, you know, speaking of Fornaroli, if the goals happen to dry up for him between now and the final series, then I think it's curtains for victory because, you know, you take Azani, for example, he's not a player who can, who can carry victory on his shoulders and, you know, carry the goal-scoring load. And I just don't see anyone else that can do that besides Fornaroli. So, uh, yeah, considering the ridiculous amount of draws that Victor have had this season, um, that win would be such a relief for, for the victory. And, yeah, puts him into third on the table with some breathing space now. Paletti, we've just talked about Nestor Irinkunda. I wonder if there's a lot of parallels between him and Daniel Azani this season. You know, Azani's footballing talent is not disputable. He is an exceptional footballer when he is at his best. But perhaps that inconsistency is a leak of his mental game. And, you know, he's gone overseas. He hasn't had a good time. Granted, the first portion of it marred by injury. But he's come back home and he's had to work hard. And, you know, he's gone to the Bulls. He's come to victory now. He's had good performances, but hasn't been able to string good ones together in a row. I wonder what Tony Popovich's influence on him has been this season and if we can get him to have a good, consistent run of performances into finals, what that will mean for his career as well. Sorry, did you throw to me there, Lockie? Uh, Paletti might be gone. We've lost him. Jacob, do you want to answer that question? (laughs) I'll answer it. Um, Yeah, I think it's one of those ones where... Arzani is both a cautionary tale for putting expectations on youngsters, but I think also an example of how, uh, but also an, an example of how mentality can bring that talent 
back from what looks to be a pretty, you know, dark place. Like you mentioned, he was marred with injuries when he first moved overseas and that sort of slowed things down a little bit and, and hampered him a bit. And now he's able to, to sort of come back to the A-League where he's a little bit more familiar with how things go and he's putting those performances together. But like you and Christian both touched on, it's now about finding that consistency. You know, knowing what works is one thing, making it work every week is another. And I think that that's something that he and the coaching staff, the other players, they have to, you know, everybody wants their team to be, you know, playing a, a, the, the best football that they can. The players on the team want each other to be performing, you know, the best that they can be. And I think, you know, Christian, you touched on it quite well with regards to Mashash's movement and how that sort of freed Arzani up. I think having those little things there, those little bits of, I guess, synergy between the players where you can go, right, okay, we know he's doing really well at the moment in, in this aspect of his game. Let's allow him to do that. Let's free him up, get him on the ball, that sort of thing. I think that that's where it's really going to help. It helped as well facing a team like the Glory who defensively were sort of neither here nor there. They weren't sitting really deep. They weren't pressing really high. And that just sort of allowed that space for Arzani to move into, to receive the ball, to to play in. So I do think it's, yeah, it's going to be an interesting, he's sort of an interesting case study, isn't he? You know, of, of his, his career is anything far from over, right? He's, yes, it might have looked like that a couple of years ago when he was injured and, and people were probably writing him off, but he's come back and he's, he's showing glimpses again of, of that promise that he did have and why he was so highly rated in the first place. So I do think that, you know, look, I, I do support Adelaide, so it, it's a it's silly to say, you know, I want victory to do well, but, but Arzani <laughs> is, is a good player and, you know, there's, there's, he's a potential, you know, the future of the Australian national team as well um, in there. And, you know, if, if he can sort of get these performances together, I don't know what it's going to be. Is it a mental thing? Is it, he goes, right, I've had a good performance and then sort of that's just him then almost resting on his laurels the next week. If it's a case of he doesn't think he can do it again, I'm not sure what it is. If it's mental, if it is in the game plan, whatever it is, something needs to happen for him to be able to find that magic week in, week out, because it's there. We've seen it this season. We've seen it in this game. It's about now making sure that they can sort of harness that and and really just continue it forwards for the rest of the season and into next season as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's 25 years old. He's still got so much football ahead of him and... You know, I'll be honest, looking at the performance, the, the top-end performances that I've seen from Daniel Arzani this season and comparing it to Martin Boyle, who is the starting right wing for the Socceroos, I know mm. I'm, who I'm picking at their, the peak of their performance in yeah. Daniel Arzani. So it's a very interesting question for sure. Christian, in terms of the rest of the game, you mentioned Bruno as well. I think you're dead right. I think if we've learnt anything about the victory uh, throughout the course of the year when they, they lost Bruno for the Asian Cup and they seemed to try 15 different players at the nine. If they're going to win the championship this year, it is going to be off the back of goals scored by Bruno Fornaroli. They haven't found a replacement and maybe in the mid to long term next year they can, but in the short term, finals are coming up thick and fast. Uh, they're not going to be able to find another solution anymore. It's going to be Fornaroli or bust, it feels like. Yeah, definitely. They'll be putting him in bubble wrap for Neroli for these next few weeks just to ensure that, you know, he doesn't get injured or, um, you know, just that he stays fit and healthy because, like you said, it's just he's so important. He's such a crucial figure to that, that starting lineup. And without him up top, you know, Economides was, um, was experimented for a couple of games. We've known his fitness issues um, over the season. So, I mean, yeah, they don't really have too many options that Popovich can really, you know, 100% rely on to say, yeah, this guy's going to provide me with the goals. They just don't have that um, at the moment. Uh, what's bloody said? Okay, you're good. <laughs> and and Paletti, you know, from a Perth perspective, their, their season is over now. They don't... Not mathematically, but they won't play finals here. But, you know, the benefit, uh, David Williams, super sub again, somehow he comes off the bench, creates the goal that gave Perth a little bit of spark. You know, they never really looked super close to nabbing an equaliser, but given the amount of draws that Victory have had, you know, fans would be nervous and uh, Williams again providing that impact. Uh, are you sure that Perth won't play finals? Are you sure? Yes, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I know I, I know I backflipped on this, but yeah, no, they're done. Uh, look, yeah, for Perth, I mean, they've gone away from home. They've got to uh, 
you know, they've scored. They've, they've done basically all you sort of can do. I was going to say they've got a result, and then I, uh, they had, you know, forgot that there was the uh, the two goals for Fauna Rolly, not the one of them. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I think given everything that's gone on with the Perth Glory, I think this is probably one of the best results you can kind of hope for against, you know, a victory side that's, you know, aiming to contend for finals. They're in third place. You know, they've created a little bit of a gap uh, with MacArthur now. They're only two points back of the Mariners. Could overtake them this weekend pending results. I mean, it's it's an interesting dilemma. So I think I think this probably isn't the worst result in the world for the glory.